the man who until recently um, served as the deputy majority leader and now he is the majority leader in parliament and so he's literally about six days into office and I, I believe they haven't even let him rest because there's been a lot to do in parliament as expected well he joins us in the studio this morning you're wondering who that is in case you don't know but of course i'm sure you do Honorable Alexander Kwamina Afenyo Markin. He's a member of Parliament of Ghana for the Ifutu constituency in the central region and also the majority leader in Parliament. He joins us now. Hello, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Pretty Thank early in the morning, me. I know. Yeah. Yeah, but this this must be regular for you because of the work you do. That's correct. Right? But congratulations on becoming majority leader. Thank you, and thank you to TV3. In the early days in Parliament, your platform uh, gave me an opportunity to be part of the national discourse. Mm -hmm. I remember those were the days with Anaba and Amwa. We come mm -hmm. very early, yeah. enjoy the debates, endure the questions. Mm -hmm. And where we aired, we got corrected, and uh, it's made us better. Mm. So I also thank TV3 for the opportunity. Uh, politics, as you may know, is not about getting at each other's throats, mm -hmm. but really discussing the issues. and. For me, sometimes I follow TV3, you do the critique, mm -hmm. and that is the work of the media. If you make us too comfortable, yeah. we may forget about our mandate. Uh, to the extent that you are dealing with issues and not attacking personalities, it's good for democracy. Mm -hmm. So keep doing your work, except that you must equally give opportunity to those in government to explain their side, because... Sometimes the atmosphere gets toxic mm. and people may throw in a lot of things that may not be true. But all in all, I think it's a good discuss for our democracy and country, mm. Ghana. Definitely. And I believe that in the last couple of months or years, we've done exactly that, ensuring that everyone has an equal share of the cake and ensuring that they get to speak to their side. But in your case, you've been doing quite a lot of work. And I think yesterday probably might have been one of the busiest for you as a majority leader. Uh, yesterday, the Human Rights, uh, Sexual Rights and Family Values Bill was passed in Parliament after the third reading. And you had described it as having some constitutional issues that if it should go to court, it could face some challenges. Are you surprised or disappointed that this bill has been passed by Parliament? None of them. You're none not surprised, of, you're not disappointed? None of them. I, I think that in this our game, people put forward their views on matters of national importance. And mm. my colleagues came up with this uh, bill and we all supported the, the fundamentals of the bill mm -hmm. that as a country we should not give space for a man to marry a man and for a woman to marry a woman. Mm. That we are, we are, we are adding them on that. Where I differed mm -hmm. was the landing of the matters in, in issue. So for instance, if we say that those who are engaged in that act must suffer some consequences. Mm. I am concerned about how they suffer the consequence, whether or not the, 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 the consequences of their actions would lead to a reform and reintegration of those persons in society, or that we, it would lead to an escalation. Yeah. So I aimed at the custodial sentencing regime mm -hmm. that the act was introducing and echoed the point that given the conditions in our prisons, which conditions have given rise to a new sentencing regime by our judiciary, mm. we needed to proceed with much caution by, say, introducing a community serv ser 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 service regime mm -hmm. or a non-custodial. So a non-custodial sentencing would be open yeah. where it could just be limited to a fine. And in fact, in my amendment, I even introduced mandatory counseling. Mm. But you see, the atmosphere had become so emotional, still it remains emotional, that people would not even want to pay attention to fine details. And Bella, please, with respect, mm. be honest with me. Have you fully read the bill? 
Partly, not fully. Yes, Agree. That's true. So all the, I've asked this question mm. to a lot of media personalities. Mm. And they've given me an honest answer like you have. That they've not read the bill. Mm. And they've not paid attention to the details. So in part, with respect, you, the media, have not helped the discourse. How so? How so? Because those of you in the front line mm. have not taken the pain to look, do a critique of the law. We are only looking at the surface. And I'm saying mm. that from what I know at the prisons, from what I have read, the prison officers, interview them. Two or three, you do well. Mm. Go there, interview them. Some MPs who have been in public service in that area have had cause to privately engage me and say, Leonard, this thing that we want to incarcerate will be a, be a problem. Mm. And I tell you, a good number of the MPs, out of fear, mm -hmm. could not come out. And they were pushing for secret ballots. Unfortunately, when I made that application, it, it was declined. Yeah. Because in our rules, when it gets to consideration, there is no such express provisions for a member to call for a secret ballot to challenge a vote. Mm. So this was at the discretion of Mr. Speaker to uphold mm. that, um, that invitation for him to use secret ballot. If we had done secret ballot on certain aspects mm -hmm. of the bill, which members consider as very draconian, because how do you say that? You, you've just married. Mm. You give birth to a son. And a teenage, that son comes to tell you, mommy, I am this. And unfortunately, finds himself in, you know, entangled in the law. How would you as a mother see your son be prosecuted and sent to jail? All right? Mm -hmm. Perhaps your only son. As a mother, I believe that your call will be for the law to give space for a reform, a reintegration, mm -hmm. a change. Because behavioral. I'm not here talking, being an advocate for LGBT. I'm being here looking at how we can reintegrate, how as society we can deal with the issue in a situation that will not get worse. Because sodomy takes its roots from the prisons. Mm. People get sodomized in our prisons, in our cells. I'm a practitioner of the law. I've done criminal practice for many years. And sometimes when your clients are being sent to cells, the police themselves will tell you that, counsel, making sure, say, you're in Accra Central. Mm. Then you ask why, I said, there be a word there. That's how, that's how, that's how. They tell us, look, why are we pretending that we don't know the everyday story on our streets? Is it a matter of pretense or is it also the question that if you're pushing for non-custodial sentences, for example, a fine, how does that really stop whatever activity that the law may frown on if this should become a law? Uh, push your question So again. I'm saying that you're pushing for non-custodial sentences. For example, for um, someone who is caught in the act, you're pushing for a one-month community service, for example, which is one of the things that you raised on the floor of parliament. The question that many people are asking is, how does this really stop that behavior? How does how, how, The question mm. too is that, how does the conviction... Mm incarceration solve the problem mm. for me on the balance since it's a behavioral issue please engage some clinical psychologists i engage them proud to my views publicly mm -hmm. and there were three of them that i engaged they told me clearly that when dealing with issues of behavioral uh, addictions yeah. you don't play the hard ball to get solution. Mm. So a drug addict, do you, do you, you know, incarcerate a drug addict? Mm. You create a space for rehabilitation. That rehabilitation will require some therapy, some procedure, mm. some process to get the person out of that behavior. Now you don't put the person in a situation that behavior would be reinforced. Mm. So you say the person is a gay, the person is a lesbian. You throw the person into jail. Would you get the results that you want? I beg to differ. Mm. But be that as it may, my job has ended as a parliamentarian. I've expressed my view. We operate a majoritarian system. 
the law has passed. You, remind, you raised an issue initially that I had said on a different platform mm -hmm. that I see some constitutional yes. roadblocks. Mm -hmm. True, they themselves, the, 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 the sponsors themselves saw it. Yesterday, mm. they attempted to cure it by subjecting at, or, uh, clause 10 and 11 to the dictates of the constitution. I said, well, here we are. So I realized that at least all the talking I've been doing, they've also been listening. Because I know they have some great lawyers behind them. Mm. So yesterday, when they came, and they themselves moved for further second consideration, yeah. I said, here we are. Then I told them, then let's look at the 12. The 12 too should be subjected to the constitutional provision. They said, no, 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 no. So I felt that, ah, it's like one way. You want to have your way. But you don't want to hear anybody. So I think that they themselves have seen it, but they've not seen all. So in that case, what do you intend to do about this? Because again, we're only waiting I've for said the that president my job, to ascend. My job, Would you go to court? No. My dear, my job has ended in the court, in, the, in, the, in, 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 in parliament. parliament. A Democrat must concede accept the situation and move on. The rest of it is for others to play their role. Mm. All right? Mm. I have said, as a lawyer, I see serious constitutional issues in there. Yesterday, they attempted to cure some of them. They didn't cure all. Mm. So I see all of that. Okay. But my job ended yesterday as a Democrat in that chamber. Okay. And that's it. Now, the 18 TSOs who are saying or threatening that they'll go to court if the president should go ahead and assent this bill, would they have a case then? Whether they will go to go court before or after is their own bona fide. It is their bona fide. And mm. they are liberty to explore. In fact, we need to explore such opportunities, give the judges the chance mm -hmm. to also have a, a bite. All right? Yeah. They should, all parties, all stakeholders should have an opportunity to fine tune. You see, what it is is that if as a nation we are taking time to look at the law properly without overly being in, emotional, mm. would have had very important input that would have helped the law. Yesterday, I felt very sad. Why? Because my very respected professor who taught me mm -hmm. at Ghana Law School attacked Professor Audrey Gajepu. And I was not happy yeah. at all. Because it's a discuss, mm -hmm. for God's sake. Hear her. We are hearing you. Put your views across. And if you listen to those who are opposed to the law, mm -hmm. They are not opposed to everything. Yeah. They are opposed to aspects. For instance, the law provides for people who sodomize and those pedophiles to suffer mm. jail term. Yeah. I am not opposed to that. Mm. I'm not. If you want to introduce a child into the act, I will not propose a community sentence for you. Those who are luring children yeah. into homosexuality. And that was the argument of my professor, Fua Mwini. Mm. And I'm with him on that. You cannot allow an adult to go scot-free after so subjecting a child to that situation. Mm -hmm. Because that child is a minor. So, such a provision that go to jail, I would support it. Okay. And I support that. Now, the aspect where a journalist, a media person is being guarded on his or her editorial policy. Mm -hmm. And by so doing, you suffer a jail term. And it, but, but that's what yesterday some judge touched on. No, no, they on. didn't see that. That's he what I'm saying. They touched on it and they said tried to cure. we're allowed to do no. our work uh, no. as long as you're not necessarily no. promoting the No, act. Bella. They, they, they didn't. They attempted. Mm. But you see, that must be left for further argument. Okay. If you follow the debate yesterday, I got up mm -hmm. and with the leave of speaker, I asked them to clarify. Yeah. And they, they, they're checking out. But it doesn't take away the substance of the provision. Mm. Which to me, that addition, that amendment, that subject to constitution, mm -hmm. it didn't cure it. It is gagging you the media. In this law, 
we have reintroduced a criminal libel, which we repealed in 2001. Some judge does not agree to this. Well, I am a practitioner of, uh, of our law, and I say so. Mm. That from what I know, what I've seen, that is what it means. He's one of the sponsors of the bill, and he says... That I'm they saying that they didn't that listen to not. my views enough, but okay. be that as it may, we can always disagree on that. Mm. Perhaps when the law is tested, we will see who will be vindicated. Mm. All right? For the time being, it has passed. My work has ended. But I want it to be on record that those who are opposed to the bill mm -hmm. are not opposed to it in absolute terms. Okay. They are opposed to aspects, aspects of, of the bill. And that is one thing that people must pay attention to when it comes to lawmaking. And in your case, for example, I mean, there's been a lot of... Um media attention over some of the aspects, but not all, because you raised about 14 Yes, and they were all What on, are some of these other right. amendments? One, I was tackling the custodial sentence for those parties involved in it. Mm -hmm. I said, look, if we say they are wrong, let us limit it to a fine, okay. introduce mandatory counseling, introduce cost, uh, community service. Community service can take many forms. Mm -hmm. And I anchored those submissions on the new sentence regime of our judiciary, where the judiciary is actually dealing with Act 30, mm -hmm. our Criminal and Other Offenses Act, where it, there has been a lot of criticism on misdemeanor yeah. being a, a, an offense which would take a person to jail. Mm -hmm. And by the way, as a country, we've also enacted the plea bargaining law. Previously, if you are charged with causing financial loss to the state and you are proven guilty, you go to jail. Yeah. Today, any offense that leads to financial loss to the state, you are allowed to pay back mm. to the state. You can negotiate and pay with interest. Then the matter is closed. Mm -hmm. That is a fundamental shift from the old regime. And I'm saying that Consistent with what we are doing as a country, why not introduce a sentencing regime that will help with this behavioral offense? Okay. It is a behavioral offense. And you have to look at it in that way. That was all about it. Okay. But, like I said, it does not mean that an adult introducing a child to it must also benefit from community centers. No, it's a big no. Be jailed. Okay. That's one. You are trying to destroy the future of society. All right. I get your point. But now we're expecting that within the next seven days, the president will be aware of the documents indicating that this has been passed by parliament. And he has between 17, well, seven to 14 days to also pass it or has sent it to law. What are your expectations? Do you think the president... I don't speak this? for Mr. President. I speak for parliament. And I'm saying that Parliament is done with a job. What if the president signs? No, don't, don't let me get into the president. What if he does? I don't get your point. I'm saying mm -hmm. that my job ends in Parliament. All questions about the presidency, I believe the presidential spokesperson can deal with that. I'm asking this because of a statement the president had made in front of the Anglican Church where he said that the issue about LGBT will not be legalized under his watch as president, which is why we're asking, because now a lot of people are torn. We're hearing from some majority members indicating that they are not for the entirety of this bill that now has been passed. No, no, it's not the, if you say majority of, are you, do you mean the context of majority caucus? No, I mean you some mean MPs, some MPs. Who do not necessarily Right, agree. so at least you are so confirming the position. in that case, even position. though we've had indications that majority of the minority members actually agree with this bill. We're not really hearing much from the majority side to indicate whether they are for or against the bill. And you've said it yourself. The reason why a number of them are not coming out... Because they are scared. Here. They said maybe their constituency, people attack them, they, there may be propaganda. Exactly. And all. Well, that's, yeah, that's the position But in took. this case where the president has said openly to the church that but, LGBTQ is not going to be legalized under his but, watch as president, would you expect him to accept no, no, this bill or not? I don't get it. The president said, you said the president said mm -hmm. LGBTQ would not be legalized mm -hmm. under his watch. Mm -hmm. In other words, he would not legalize it. Exactly. So now but that there's a law that, that is, legalizes it. Is it? No. Let's get your context okay. right. 
Is there a law legalizing it? No, there isn't. But he says it will not be passed under him. No. The president said he will not legalize it. Mm. That, that's it. That's okay. what the president mm -hmm. said. And that's why I'm asking you. Is there a law legalizing case, it? No, there isn't. But in that case, what if the president assents to this law? But I've answered you that mm. my work ends in parliament. Okay. Okay. I understand. Thank but you. anyway, let's just move on. And of course, like I said, we've been talking about you becoming majority leader. And that also caused a lot of conversation within the media space. Um, we, we heard at one point that there had been changes made. Then we heard from the first deputy speaker come to the media and say that there's really no intention to replace the then majority leader. And then now we have... No, he didn't say resign. that. He did. No, he said... Can we, that, he can said, we replace? Yes, yeah, sure. We have wait, never wait. and we will never. No, he, he didn't say the majority leader. He said the leadership. Mm -hmm. That's what he said. But that includes a search in Mensa No, so, so don't say he said okay. the majority leader. He said the leadership. No problem. But if, that also includes the majority leader at that time. And then he concluded, uh -huh. wait, wait. Mr. Speaker said there was no such intention to change the leadership mm -hmm. and that they had confidence in the leadership and that the, the media was speculating and that if such intention was to be carried, the caucus will communicate the same to the media. Mm -hmm. that was what, that's what he said. Mm -hmm. And he was not wrong. He wasn't wrong? No. Okay. Because at the time, indeed, there was no such intention to change leadership. What would you say to people who think that you might have instigated all of this who? just for your personal ambitions? Somebody there have been concerns. People MPP, have said it. MPP is a big party. Mm. It doesn't take an individual to instigate a thing. It's a big party. Mm. So maybe they don't know how the inner workings of the party uh, operate. How do they operate? Well... The party has its own structures for decision making, and those are the triggers. Mm. Is the party divided? Is the majority caucus divided? I wouldn't say so. I, I don't see any division. What I see is that there is a platform for people to express views, and some could express them internally, some do it publicly. Uh, these are part of democracy mm -hmm. and if you are a leader finding yourself in such situation it helps you to navigate and be on guard because silence can also mislead so you should be lucky to hear people talk and mm -hmm. express their views mm -hmm. on matters that affect them and that is that calls for regular interaction and updates so i'm not worried mm -hmm. um I joined parliament in opposition. I worked so hard. Like I told you this morning, in opposition, my day will start at 5 a.m. Okay? Mm -hmm. Start with TV3. From here, I run to GTV. From GTV to Adum. Yeah. And then land at uh, Peace FM. Sometimes you get there late. And then in the afternoon after parliament, you go on air again. Sometimes we start at ETV, go through Happy FM, and then move to Adum and go back to Parliament. Mm. We came into office. I did not get the benefit of a ministerial appointment. Mm. Neither did I make it to committee leadership. But my records are there that I worked with the colleagues who had gotten the opportunity. Mm -hmm. We went to ECOWAS Parliament. We were nine instead of eight. I resigned and yeah. came back home. When I came back and I was sent back again, my name was taken off. Another person replaced me. Yeah. I didn't complain because it's part of it. In, at committee, I was a senior member on the public accounts committee. A junior who had just come to Parliament was a deputy ranking, mm. was senior to me. Mm -hmm. In, in committee, I worked. I didn't complain. So I believe that a man must wait for his turn. Mm. And if it is not your turn, you can only pray and invoke the virtue of patience from above to enable you to endure. Mm. Because 
after all, we, we've all sprung from the same stock and we are partakers of the same nature, yeah. sharing the same hope. Those distinctions may exist, but it's only for the purpose of subordination and to recognize hierarchy. And you shouldn't get too depressed because it's not your turn today. Yeah. Because I've had a very checkered uh, journey mm -hmm. in my political career. And in all of these difficulties, I've placed my faith in God. That if it's my time, I will be there. All right? Yeah. And that's been it. Tomorrow, if I'm not there, I will go back and work with whoever. And my boss, Ose Chemin Sabunsu, will tell you how loyal I have been to him mm. and how humble I have submitted to his leadership in teaching me. He, even yesterday, mm -hmm. uh, three days ago, when Mr. President came, I had to go to him and say, Sir, when the president finishes, because I had taken some precedence, yeah. I had to go to him and say, how do we do it? I don't address him honorable. I call him sir. Because the man is 67. I'm 45. I'll be 46 soon. Mm -hmm. He is old enough to be my dad. Yeah. And he himself took me and said, one day you would be my successor. He told me this in far away Hanoi, Vietnam. And he always got me to read the rules book. And so on Tuesday, I was with him. I took some few notes how to deal with it. Yesterday, when I had difficulty, I called on him that he should come to the chamber. We had some discussions. He gave me a guide. He came in and to rescue me. So I would continue to need, look up to him. to him. It's a big shoe. Yeah. I've not finished learning the trade. I'm still a mere entered apprentice. I'm not just a master craftsman. Mm -hmm. I'm not a master mason yet. I've not even become a fellow of craft. I'm just a mere entered apprentice. Yes, uh, then that's a long way to go. I mean, Indeed. there's a lot you have Indeed, to do. Because he has been there for 23 years. Mm -hmm. He was a deputy whip, chief whip, deputy leader, and majority leader, minority leader, majority leader. He had the absolute for 15 months, 15 years, two months. So I can't compare. I have a long way to go. And I'm ready to learn the trade mm. and master it. But do you feel you have the backing and the loyalty of the majority members in parliament? I mean, for example, during your swearing in, um, the first deputy speaker was not around. Uncle Joe Wise is a godfather. You know, sometimes I say people <laughs> don't know the politics. They always pay attention, too much attention to the optics. Mm. Yes, anyway, it's a perception-driven enterprise we're in. So I can understand if people would always want to look at the optics. But... We have a fair working relationship. Okay. He likes me as a person. So I know. why was he not there? No. He doesn't need to be there. He doesn't need to? He doesn't need to be in the chamber at all times. Well, yes, but this was a special location. No, Where no, a no, new don't get it leader... Wrong. Please, Hold don't on. let us... I, I think don't, it was a let, very important no, day, no, no, especially us, looking at how don't let us it has been in the last couple of days. Bella, Bella, please. And so on please. such an important no, 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 don't, day don't as you're swearing in, don't let us trivialize. Don't let us should have been there. No, don't let us trivialize it. We are having a transition. Mm -hmm. What was important was for the outgoing leader to usher me in mm -hmm. and to install me as his able successor that I had what it takes to undertake the work as a leader. Mm. To me, that was sufficient. If we want to now go into specifics, mm. why was this person not in the chamber? The way parliament works, as I am told, at the time, the appointment committee had scheduled a meeting and they were in a rush okay. to come in mm. because he chairs the appointment committee and he had called a meeting for them to plan the, the vetting. Okay. And at the time they got in, the, 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 the whole transition or the handing over was, was done. Mm. And we met in Kweu, in Kwetia. We, we had a good discussion. And proud to the day, we had met mm. as leadership. He had congratulated me. We had discussed the way forward for the party. And he had expressed his views on how to him, leadership of the caucus must be elected. And he's a, he's a Democrat. You cannot take away his right, far right, mm. that he has. As, as a Democrat, that to him, 
leadership of parliament must have their independence to elect their own uh, members of parliament mm -hmm. or the caucus yeah. must have their own independent right mm -hmm. to elect their leaders. Leader, yeah. That is his view. Mm -hmm. It is his view that in other jurisdictions, same happen. If you go to mighty US, their national offices are not elected by popular vote. But in Ghana, our national offices are elected by popular vote. Mm. If you go to mighty UK, their national party offices are not elected by popular vote. But they have a working procedure where they use a certain formula in choosing their leaders. In Ghana, we have certain provisions in our constitution mm -hmm. as political parties which direct how leaders are chosen. Yeah. We also have standing orders. So the combo of these will require certain steps to be taken to make all, all parties involved in the process happy. In, the, in this game of politics, you cannot always get it right. People may disagree. Mm. I recall that in 2012, when we were coming in in 2013, there were MPs who were soliciting our signature, the signature to remove Honorable Oseche Mensabonso for Jogate. Mm. All right? Mm -hmm. They were able to solicit 80 signatories. And it's, the decision was taken finally at a hotel at the airport, 2013. Mm -hmm. And the 80 signatories aimed at removing Honorable Ocheche Mensabonso for Jogate. The party said, no. You, the MPs who are coming in, and you, the uh, continuing MPs, mm -hmm. do not have that right to petition us that you want Che to go. To go okay. The man had just served four years as a leader in opposition. National Council of the Party said no. They reserve the right to choose and they maintain Honorable Oseche Mensa Bonzo. And rather removed the then deputy. Uh, the deputy had lost elections. So they removed the uh, 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 answer as mm. chief whip and replaced him with Dambuchi. Yeah. And then Honorable Natoshi came in. On Honorable Bafwe Wa came in. And these were the decisions of the party. Uh -huh. Okay. So the party always has its inner workings. And then Jogate became second deputy whip, a second deputy speaker. Then when we came into office 2017, then same National Council did changes and maintained Honorable Chairman Sabuzo mm -hmm. and brought in my respected senior at the bar, yeah. Adrasafo as his deputy, deputy yeah. and then my respected senior at the bar, uh, Amayo Chairman, as chief whip, mm -hmm. and then my mate, colleague from Pandai, Nindam. And then Moses Enim was also my mate as whips. All right? And then when we had power again, I was brought in as a deputy. And my good friend and senior at UCC, uh, Anod Ombre, became good. the chief whip. Mm -hmm. And Habib and uh, 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 our sister from Ayawasu West, Wogon, Lydia Alassan, yes. you know, we were put together. Mm. So it's been like that. But okay. it has to also be, to, has, I have to emphasize that people have also expressed views that there must be some collaboration. Yeah. That mm -hmm. there should be some broader consultation. Mm. And you remember when the NDC also had, it changes. Similar challenges arose. So I think as Democrats going forward, we would have to fine-tune how such discretions of the party are exercised. Okay. The emphasis here is broader consultation. Mm, okay. Let's talk about the State of the Nation Address. And, I mean, as expected, the minority did indicate that the state of our nation is hopeless at the moment. And so they were quite disappointed in some aspects of the economy that the president did not touch on, or some aspects of society like unemployment and also corruption. For you, what do you make of this succession? I'm sure you're not even surprised that this is coming from the minority. Well, first of all, we are dealing with people who have had the opportunity to govern this country before. Mm -hmm. The last 
opportunity they had was for eight years. Yeah. On Tuesday, when President Akufuado was in the chamber, I was going through the 2013, 2014, 2015, and 2016 State of the Nation, State of the Nation mm. um, um, Yeah. And they were full of lamentations. President Mahama then was complaining that no matter what you do, there are people in the country who don't appreciate it. He said it mm. in 2016. He again said that our economy was a gorgeous back economy and that any shocks externally affect us so directly. So Ghanaians should bear with him. It wasn't his fault that the CD was suffering. That we were import dependent. He again lamented on electricity. Mm. That his government's hands were tied. That people were calling on him to reduce electricity tariffs. But it was practically impossible. He again complained that his inability to expand infrastructure mm. was as a result of the limited revenue from tax. And that we were spending over 70% of our tax revenue on payment of public service uh, salaries, mm -hmm. or wages and remunerations and all. These were contained in all the addresses that he presented to parliament. So I ask myself, if not for political exp uh, uh, expediency. expediency, what has changed? You see, the NDC is trying to mislead the country. How? Good. How? They were the same group of people. You and I know they have not changed. In terms of the, the, the figures, the personalities leading the charge. These were the very people who were in office and told us, that electricity tariffs could not be reduced. Free SHS implementation was impossible. Electricity tariffs could not be reduced. Common nursing training allowances could not be paid. Mm. And they made it clear to us. So this government comes into office. The first step it takes is to repeal certain taxes and to reduce certain rates. That was a work done by the mm. MPP. And by the way, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, no major tax was ever introduced in this country. Do a fact check. 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, mm. MPP government under Akufado did not introduce any, did not impose any major tax on Ghanaians. That doesn't make any difference if it, the taxes have been introduced It, it does, it does. We, it are does? Both, we, mm -hmm. are, we are making an argument. Okay. It does. It means that when it came, looking at the situation, it needed the cushion Ghanaians. It needed to give ventilation. So it repealed some of the taxes that we're complaining about. Mm. And some were also reduced in terms of the rates. At the same time, mm -hmm. any government that does that, be sure that it will take it from some other angle. No. Government reduced taxes, repealed some taxes, and at the same time, introduced the free SHS. Not only that, government went ahead to announce further reduction in electricity tariffs mm -hmm. for domestic use, industry and manufacturing and now it's gone up i agree but to what extent let's look at the rates if the government had maintained what it came to meet mm. in 2017 it would have been worse so lo let's not look at it in absolute terms look at it in relative terms compare related to the past okay because what was the situation of yesterday what is the situation now if the tariffs that we're paying as a people mm -hmm were maintained and today it had gone up by say 20 percent you can say it is worse off and that mpp is not better now if mpp came it reduced it by a certain percentage and today the rate of increase is still lower an ndc politician cannot come and tell you that a day. 
But if you meant, if you said, if you described their government as, as being poor and indicating that, you know, they didn't run the government well, which is why Ghanaians voted them out, and raised the hope of Ghanaians. And now we're in this situation where things are very dire. In fact, I don't even know if you have lights, sir. Do you have lights at the moment? I do, with respect. You do? I do. Did you have light last night? Yes, please, I, I did. slept in the dark last night. It is possible. I will not deny that. What is going on? I am saying that... Is it doom so? It cannot be. What is it? It cannot be. So should the ECG come out with a plan? Because well, it looks like, we it, it looks don't like I don't want me to answer no, your no, question. No, no, I'm just you asking you You are now doing me pound for pound. No. You know, <laughs> my yesterday's job when I was a defender, mm -hmm. I do pound for pound. Now, now you're an attacker. I am, I am supposed to negotiate. Oh, so let's negotiate. Okay. So don't, if, don't take me back to my old... Uh, all the boxing, you know, I'm strategy. just checking. No, no, but you take I've it been easy with me. No, no, take it easy with me. No, no, this is not this is not, this is not the Mahama regime with respect. So, this so is, what does that no, mean? No, this is not the Mahama regime. What does that Give mean? Give me the opportunity to answer your fundamental questions okay. about governance. Mm -hmm. The NPP came into office for the record. Recruitment into the security services, as compared to what the NDC did in 20, for eight years. Mm. What we have done is second to none in terms of the numbers. And I want you again to subject this to a fact check. Are you listening to Ghanaians? Oh, please. I am listening because to Ghanaians. Because if, if what you've done wait, wait. is if, second you know, to none, no. Ghanaians should also corroborate that. I, I, you see, the average Ghanaian mm. is not satisfied because things are not better the way he expects. Mm -hmm. And I agree. Mm -hmm. However, I am saying that there are two horses in this race. There are two horses in this race. Mm -hmm. Somebody comes to you that I will marry you. You give him a hand. He takes you home. Provides nothing for you. Mm -hmm. Another man, and he divorces you. Or you divorce the person. Another man comes, he takes you, he feeds you morning, evening. And that other man comes and says that, you see now, this man is not giving you dinner. He's only giving you breakfast and you are hungry. He makes you, he's trying to take advantage of your, of your plight of today, your expectation to have dinner. Forgetting that he himself, when he was married to you, he refused to provide you breakfast. Such a person cannot be trusted. Such a person cannot be relied upon. So basically, the inference here, or the metaphor here, is clearly that the NDC promising you today of a better Ghana is a mere illusory. It's otuous. It has no foundation because it had an opportunity. And that is why I'm telling you that the Mahama of yesterday and his cabinet ministers of yesterday are the same today. They have not changed. They have nothing new. The major social intervention programs that they promised to introduce, mm -hmm. they could not introduce them. Tell me, is there a single social intervention program that they are eight year in office introduced? No. But in okay. our case, uh -huh. we have. Which is what? Free oh, SHS? Of course it is. Free SHS? Yes, is it, which, is it not? Which, which there has been a report recently. Oh, come on. Education uh, it is not there has been perfect. A constant I agree. Consent about I agree. It, All the consents reviewed. agree. The president himself acknowledged. Bella. So I why will, is it not being I will, reviewed? I will not which say, is what I'm asking you. Do you hear, governance, from, do you hear Ghanaians? No, and you listen you see, to if them you, as if a you, If you pick it from that angle, you will get it wrong. How so? Listen, I do research in the FUTU every quarter. Mm-hmm. I just received my research findings for January, February. We've not ended March. We've not gotten into March. But I did January, February. Mm. I got it yesterday. Okay. What so does it say? I, I got it yesterday. Okay. So I have a fair idea of the concerns of the ordinary Ghanaian. But when we are making a political argument, mm -hmm. where such an argument may tilt to somebody to benefit, it is important that I help to situate the argument right. It will not be wrong for anybody to express concerns about the free SHS. That concern should be well-founded. Like my backyard, Winnisek. They needed more classroom blocks. Mm -hmm. They needed more beds. Okay? There's free SHS. More children are getting into our classrooms. More parents are letting their children get into school because it is free. Mm. 
we need to get the institutional pillars in place. So, it calls for more allocation of resources. So, if anybody is talking about challenges, the person is right. And I agree. The person will not be wrong in saying that the system is not perfect. Mm. So, what do we do? We must review. We must constantly touch base. So, for instance, in Winneba, mm -hmm. when the, the head teacher raised this issue, I supplied them with some beds, 300 of those. When we got there, they said the new six-unit class, six classroom block, they, are, they need desk, 300 of that. I have supplied that. Okay? Okay. So, as MPs, as ministers, as government officials, what it is for us is that we must start base. That is why I said your critique, the uh, Johnny Hughes, his uh, this bite, is good for us. Mm -hmm. Because if people were listed in government, that then you begin to set up the aim. What is really the case? Because it's not who you think you are as a leader, but what they think you are. So if the people think that you are not doing it right, your job is to situate it right okay. and get it right. So what, I am which saying... Which is why we're asking. That. I so agree. Why has a review not happened, for oh, example? It is. It is. It Free is. SHS? Yes, of course. A review has happened? In terms happened? of infrastructure, government has not rested on it all. Government has constantly been improving but as a government you've been advised to really look at who benefits from free shs africa education was just a few days ago and this will be the first time that they've even touched on this and a number of people your own former finance minister has said that what which is the them? point which of them well the former finance minister Ken of Oriata. Oriata. exactly right, so what i mean is he said it himself that what is the point in giving his children free education when he can actually even pay for 10 other children africa education watch says that Instead of focusing on giving free education to everyone, why not focus on the underprivileged children so that those who can pay would pay? Why has that review not been done? And this is not the first time that this okay, has come that, up. That, that's not Parents are complaining incessantly about it. That's not a review? No. Um, you see, so a policy review would not mean the approach being suggested. What would it mean? It would mean an improvement on the policy. It, there is no turning back on the free SHS. Mm. We can't negotiate it. Okay. At all. Okay? But I agree to suggestions that would aim at helping the system function well. Mm. But not suggestions that would do a complete U10. Africa Education Watch, uh, Kobnas, uh, Kofi Asari, Kofi Asari my, yes. my, my, my colleague at UCC, mm. he's been on this for a long time and he has his very great good views and I respect him for that. Mm. But he has also commended the minister for the reforms that he has introduced. Mm. Okay? Mm -hmm. He's commended the minister highly for listening to them, especially when it came to the school placement system, all the reforms that have been introduced. And the fact that now the ordinary man's child mm -hmm. is able to get access to the Infantiman, mm -hmm. Infantipim, the Gehe, my own St. Augustine's, and all. Okay? Mm -hmm. So those are the advantages. The fact that many more are getting access and we are getting very good results, okay, mm. should not be discounted. I think that the focus should be on the allocation of resources, okay. facilities to the various schools so that the teachers would have a conducive environment to teach. The children will feel more comfortable. I think that we should also appeal to civil society and the halves in society, the upper class, to support their alma mater, mm. to support government, to partner government. That patriotic call should sincerely be made, okay, to corporate Ghana as part of ECSR to come to the aid of government in doing this. To me, that can be the direction. Okay. But a complete U-turn, for me, I would it not. It won't work. I, not that I, parents, do, I would not You would not that. recommend that. Yes. Even if parents are saying that they're even spending a lot more currently on what is supposed to be free SHS for them. Parents, you see, no matter how much parents are spending now, it will not be better than they having to pay fees. How do you say that? I'm, I'm because some are, doing, some are doing 
day schools mm -hmm. and they are not paying anything. Parents may be spending on their children, but they are still better than having to pay fees in addition. Look, it took the grace of God mm -hmm. for me to complete secondary school. But for Indom's bursary, I wouldn't have completed secondary school. Parkway Indom brought a bursary when I was in final year. That whoever breaks his record, government history literature, there's a bursary for you. It was that bursary that enabled me to register for my final year and to pay for my uh, final year uh, fees. Mm -hmm. I would have been sent home. In 2012, I met a gentleman at Ekrofo who had gotten distinction as Zion D and was unable to go to secondary school because the parent could not afford. Mm -hmm. And he was at home with distinction. Today, I don't think any poor man's child will sit at home with distinction because that poor man did not have money to pay the child's school mm. fees. Mm. So let us also highlight the positives. Okay, but, but what about the e-blocks? Why are they not being used then for the free SHS if we're talking about lack of infrastructure, which has taken quite a while for government to resolve? Bella, I think that you have not followed the Minister of Education. I won't give you numbers. He has put them out. I don't have them no, ready. but I'm yet. asking you. Are you no. saying that can all I, the e-blocks have been Can I used? answer your question? Well, if you say I'm not can following I, the minister, which is what Yes, you have not. So let me, let me help you with okay. respect. The e-blocks that we came to meet and were near completion mm. have been completed and in use. The minister has said that publicly. Every single one of them. Madam, respectfully. Uh, I respectfully repeat, asking you madam, as well. That respectfully, every let me repeat. I'm okay. saying that the e-blocks that were near completion have been completed and are in use. What is it? What is the gain to a government if a facility is in a secondary school? Madam, don't follow political propaganda. Nobody is following no, political propaganda. No, no, that propaganda. is what you're doing, doing with respect. No, you cannot, no, you are you cannot not. do that I'm to saying me. let's not. Not on air. I'm not following no, political propaganda. No, 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 it appears so. I'm doing my job Okay, but is there a particular... Is okay, you a question. Bella, let's do this. Which is why let's, I'm let's asking do a fact you a check. question. Tell me which, which of the e block I would want to follow up. Okay, thank you. But that's why I'm asking okay, you. Okay, okay. Let me listen to you first. Because you are saying... Let me listen to you first. Hold on, sir. You are saying that all of them have been used. And I'm asking you that, is it all or is it some? Okay. It's just a simple question that I'm asking you. Simple question. Bella, it is my case, mm -hmm. relying on the Honorable Minister of Education, that all the e-blocks that were near completion have been completed and in use. Okay. However, now let me come to you. Okay. However, if you as a fact-finding journalist mm -hmm. have heard that some e-blocks have been completed and same abandoned in certain secondary schools, please let me know here and now or soon hereafter, okay. in my capacity as a majority leader, I would engage my colleague, the Minister of Education, for us to visit that particular school and demand of the institutional head why an e-block has been completed and same is not in use. Mm. Give me an example. So how many have been completed at the moment? Please, the figures were put out by the Minister. Okay, so I don't really have it. it currently. However, okay. I, he... He put them out publicly. Mm. You can fact check. Okay. However, let's get back to your fundamental question. Mm -hmm. That why are e-blocks being completed and not in use? Mm. Please, do you have any? I'll get you that information. Later. Don't worry, it's not okay, a problem. Okay, no, no, Bella. I'll get you that information Bella, so we wait, can get wait, no, no, so let's, through let, with that. Let's do some interrogation. Mm -hmm. You have heard that some e-blocks have not been abandoned. Mm -hmm. They've been completed and abandoned, correct? Yes. That's what you've heard. Mm -hmm. Proud to asking me, you have not you have not subjected that to some fact check. Which is why I'm asking you right now that no, no, is so it you, really the case wait, okay. that some of them have been completed okay. and not in use. Well, if not, the can lawyer you in tell you, me. Okay, now, can you tell now me? I've seen some advocacy in you. Wait, good, what is good the advocacy? Lawyer. You've qualified it. Which is why I'm asking. No, 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 but you're, 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 really... also, you're also going around and no, 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 so saying that no, no, that was not senior how... lawyer versus <laughs> incoming lawyer. Which is why I'm asking you that wait, question. All right, so so initially. You didn't situate your question that way. Initially, you put it straight. You mm -hmm. put it to me. That why are e-blocks completed and not in use? Now you don't you've even have the numbers to no. even give me. No, 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 I concede. Yeah. But what I'm saying is exactly. that now you've conceded. And you said it yourself. Yes, That you either no, now or there Bella, after, this is your program, here. but allow me to. Hold on. You said that now you've qualified that. Is it really? That's why I wanted to find out from you whether really. Okay. So that really you put in there 
takes you away from it. Okay. That you want to verify from me whether really what is out there is mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. On that score, you are fine. Yes, sir. It means you are not saying that as a fact. I agree with you. Okay. So now I want to tell you that mm -hmm. both of us mm -hmm. should do the checks. Okay. Find out whether really the propaganda out there is true. The propaganda out there. You call it propaganda. No, no, okay. indeed. Because you, you, okay. you don't know. Okay, no problem. You call it propaganda. I yes, indeed. Say. Because that is why you want to find out whether really what is out there is true. Okay. Don't worry, I'll get you those details. But as it stands, no, I'm we, going back we, to my we issue. We both don't must worry. finish. You also have Daniel's to finish the details. Me yes, I won't but just, I won't just uh, what, what give you the What is the situation at the moment with regards to electricity? And I asked you that earlier. If Doomsaw is back, and if not, don't you think the ECG should at least give us a timetable with regards to when our lights should go on and off? Perfect, perfect. I told you that yesterday my lights were on. Today my lights are on. It doesn't mean that I always get light. Sometimes my light go off without notice. Mm. So I agree with you that ECG should come out and update us. If the, for some technical reasons we will not have light, we should know beforehand. Mm. And I agree with you on that score. Okay. We shouldn't reduce everything to politics, politics, politics. It's a state institution. It should be able to update Ghanaians because we pay electricity. Yeah. So they should be able to update us beforehand that today you would have light for five hours because of a, B, C, and D. Mm. So we are clear. So I agree with you. Okay. That call is to my friend Mahama. Mahama, yes. To, to, to ensure to to that it. his public affairs unit does what it's supposed to do. Okay. Well, sir, you have to go. I know you have a meeting, but quick one. Let's talk about Ghana's unemployment, which is a, a major issue that is plaguing a lot of Ghanaian youth in the country. In fact, the GSS had released a report indicating that our unemployment rate had gone up to 14.7% as against, and that was it in the first three quarters. It could be more. It could be more. In the first because a lot, of a, lot of, a lot of graduates are coming out and they are having difficulty getting jobs. Mm -hmm. I think that the focus is too much on public sector jobs. And there's so much expectation. Mm. When anybody comes to you, look, yesterday I asked my, my assistant to review the applications we have. Mm -hmm. We have over 1,000. Over 1,000 applications? Over 1,000 CVs in my office. Over 1,000 CVs. For a job in different sectors or in They are in looking at office. public sector. I mean, public sector. When any, any Ghanaian graduate is looking forward to public sector employment. Mm. And that is where I believe that the political class hasn't done much to deal with it. Because we need to resituate the argument mm. where we create a proper enabling environment for the private sector to thrive and create a culture of responsibility. Bella, the political class must speak the hard truth. Which is what? Which is get the citizenry to be responsible. I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. People take mass lock loans. They don't pay. NDC, MPP. Mm. When I was a presiding member, Kufo's time, mm -hmm. people were being prosecuted and by anti Gladys Asma mm -hmm. for taking loans under Rollins. And you know what they said? They, because they were NDC. And because it turned political, there was lack of political will. They got away with it. Under J.A. Kufour, those who took loans from government, Albo Motors, fishermen, mm. they didn't pay. We didn't prosecute them. Under Atamils, they took money from the state. They didn't pay. We didn't prosecute them. Under this regime, people are taking facilities from Maslok. They won't pay. We will not do anything. I'm saying that we eat our cake and we want to have it. The very monies that go into investment, and this one is not MPP, NDC matter. We need as a political class to know that there is a problem. But you see, my friends who are in opposition today who want to pounce on this, a human hole for power. Me too, when I get, a, mm. op, get into opposition, I rely on the same unemployment to say I want power. So it becomes a vicious cycle. Mm -hmm. The time has come for all of us to know that we are choking. We should let our citizens be more responsible. Look, I got taxes, mm -hmm. work and pay, mm -hmm. BYD, brand new, in opposition. I used my own investment to give it out to my people. They didn't pay. I went to Silver Star. 
I bought tear rubber, mm -hmm. brand new Suzuki. Anna, but you have money. Yes, I'm a businessman. Mm -hmm. I'm not poor. Mm -hmm. I'm a businessman. I'm not mm -hmm. poor. I started life very early. Mm -hmm. and my first Mercedes was before my 23rd birthday. So I will not say I'm poor. I'm only asking that based no, on no, people I'm, who may not no. know that you are I have, also into business. I, 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 because I, 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 I get into I am. I've been in private sector. Broker. I've been in private sector for many years. Mm -hmm. So I know my way around in the private sector. Okay. I went to Silver Star because they know me when I was running transport. Yeah. And they took my posited checks and they granted me a facility. Mm -hmm. And we took 30 taxis, Suzuki, mm -hmm. to Winneba. Mm -hmm. Because I'm a politician, eh? mm -hmm. because they know it's an MP. They worked, they didn't pay. What of those who, who, who could have benefited from the second badge? And at the end of the day, they had to pay myself. Many other politicians have initiated certain job opportunities, created job opportunities for their people that they have abused. But we've all lacked that courage to crack the whip. So our people take advantage of us and they get back onto the street. So I'm saying mm -hmm. that as a political class, let us look at this unemployment situation. Get our people to be more responsible. Okay. Not to take advantage of opportunities. Look, I won't mention a name, but I, I watched an, a program on TV. One company that has benefited from 1D1F. Mm. I invited the CEO to my office. That day, I felt sad for Ghana. Do you know what the CEO told me? Tell me. Honorable, factory navy, but you're working capital. Into factory in Isiho. Now ask, working capital are here? Or see where some of my best are 5 million cities. So that person, eh, he didn't have the edge. There was no serious odds on him. Say, look, I'm going to pay the KB. Or say, or say, I'm buying a many skilled DC factory. Working capital now, I'm bad here. Factory in Isiho. I felt sad for Ghana. I and I'm saying that I'm saying no, let me mm -hmm. finish okay. Bella please land this is not politics I'm just worried because no, no, no. of the time but it's, it's it doesn't matter time. Yeah. this is not politics now I feel sad because that money is now stuck that factory that the president commissioned mm. in central region is stuck is there the expected employment was supposed to create has not been created the chief executive who is supposed to look for the working capital mm -hmm. is saying that exim has not given him money as working capital. Mm -hmm. So for him, and fun. Mm -hmm. why should he run a country like this? And you see, we'll come back to it. Should MPP lose election in 2024? For NDC to come. My dear, like President Mahama said, <laughs> all is no rosy. You. It, you will not get a sudden change. Should we let things be the way they are? Mm -hmm. Eight, ten years, twelve years, it will be worse. It will be worse. So I am calling on you, the media, uh -huh. to push us, the political class, like you always do. That look, guys, stop this over partisanship. Okay. Guys, get on the table, get the citizenry to do what is right. Guys, be optimist. Show patriotism. What if the they've more. done all that? Napco personnel, for example, they are still asking for the arrears. Napco personnel. No, I don't, In fact, I, I the don't last think... time they even asked was February 9, where the beneficiaries were demanding for their 9 no, no, months. No, you are talking arrears. about Napco. I think no, it's but, different. But is that you not another digressing. point? We're talking about unemployment, right? No, no, but that was, that was an opportunity created out of the pressure for the unemployment, unemployed youth to get a space. Exactly. And I'm saying that... Some look of here, them still do not have their 9 months I agree. allowances. I agree. So if you're saying that Ghanaians no, no, no. should also you, be a bit more... You, you are, no, don't I, get I me wrong. What you're I am look, to, looking at the private sector. I'm not talking about the public sector. I'm saying that the public sector can do so much. Exactly. And I'm saying that but if what, we free, if, mm -hmm. we, if, we, if we crowd out the public, private sector, mm -hmm. we will choke. For instance, this intervention for NAPCO, mm -hmm. it was aimed at helping as many to get opportunity. Exactly. And I agree with you that government is tight. So, for instance, you are complaining. You are talking about those who have not been paid for nine months. Mm -hmm. It's a burden. I am not focusing on the public sector. There would always be a problem there. There would always be a limitation. 
My focus is on the private sector. I understand. That intervention should be in the private sector. But when sector. you look at that 14.7%, it combines both public and private sector, right? So that's Bella, why I'm asking you that I'm in that case, no, I no, do get you saying. I'm saying that let us re-navigate and look at the private sector. I understand. But in this case, since we're talking about employment and unemployment, that's why I'm asking about NAPCO, because they are also complaining that they've not received their arrears, and they are asking governments to do something about it. They've written letters incessantly, nothing has been done about it. They are right to make a demand. But in the long term, I'm saying that government cannot take them all. Okay. And we should not encourage government to create space for jobs that do not exist. All right. We should not create, encourage government to create space for jobs that government cannot fund. However, as a collective, we should rather create opportunities in the private sector All right. and encourage our citizenry to be more responsible, okay, mm -hmm. and take advantage of these opportunities and create wealth. All right. If we do, there will be more space created. Because right. you see a number of small businesses shutting up because of problem A, B, and C. Let me conclude on this. A lot of real estate companies that I know have masons from Togo, have carpenters from Togo, have tilers from Togo and Nigeria. Lately, mm. we are getting more Bokinabis coming in as masons, as carpenters. I ask these my private sector friends. I didn't know more for a mason from, from Togo in mm. Nigeria. I didn't know more for carpenters from Nigeria. I said, Honorable, you're crumble for no, I'm a bad, I didn't know more, sorry. We are not know where we are, a Jumano. No, say, we bread. And they would try and cut their chum. But I'm saying that the private sector itself is lamenting. Yeah. And this 14% you are talking about, all these artisans in the informal sector are part they of it. Form, yeah. Because when they interview them, they are complaining. This is not political. Okay. This is a problem in our society. So as a political class, as media, what can we do? Because the private sector investor who is into real estate and is time bound, he's taking somebody's money, will not wait for a person who is saying, I'm sick, I won't come to work today. He would employ somebody. Last year, I was doing renovation in my house. Mm -hmm. I looked at the gentleman. I said, I asked him, where are you from? The foreman I gave the job to employed a Bokinabi and a Togolese. I saw the guy. I said, he's not a Ghanaian. I told my wife, this guy is not he's a Ghanaian. Not. So I called him. I said, come. Immediately I called him. He looked at me. He said, I'm a Ghanaian. I said, well, I'm not going to take you to the police. Tell me. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm from Burkina. Hmm. And I asked the foreman, why? He said, the same thing that people tell me. That, oh, ufre, yankro, fona, ebi, awupe, juma, nente, mwa. On, ye, mao. So I'm saying that this is an attitudinal matter issue that we can deal with. Okay. It's not one day. But let's encourage our people to take advantage of opportunities. Otherwise, the political class will suffer the consequence. Okay. And we will not get solution. Well, we have to end here. Very well. Honorable, I know you have to go, but thank you so much for speaking to us. I appreciate, um, I appreciate. And, and for those of you who have been watching as well, thank you for your messages and your questions. I wish I could read them, but he has to rush um, into a, a meeting. And of course, we have a big issue also coming up. So I've been speaking to Honorable Alexander Afenyo Markin. He's the Majority Leader in Parliament, also the MP for Ifutu constituency. We'll be back shortly with a big issue. Thank you again. Thank you.